cardiovascular health is a major concern and people are looking for ways to maintain a healthy lifestyle. Uh, my name is Phil Newman. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Longevity Technology and I'm joined today by Douglas Seals and Matthew Rossman, uh, two professors at the University of Colorado in Boulder who have been leading some incredible research into cardiovascular health and aging. Uh, welcome Doug and Matt. Thank you. It's great to be here. Uh, thank you. Great, so we all know how hard our hearts work beating 24 seven, uh, the energy powering our hearts and carrying our blood away from uh, and back to our heart comes from the mitochondria, the powerhouses of cells. And mitochondria convert glucose and oxygen uh, to cellular energy. And, and they work hardest in the cardiovascular system. But as we know, mitochondria uh, numbers diminish with age, as does uh, mitochondrial dysfunction increase with age. So uh, Matt, what is the, decrease in mitochondria that is associated with age and health issues so critical to the cardiovascular system? Yeah, um, so just to back up a step, I think one of the primary areas of the cardiovascular system that our laboratory is interested in is the health of the arteries. And as you mentioned, cardiovascular health in general does decrease with aging. And in particular, uh, your, the health of your arteries also decreases with aging. So the primary expressions of arterial aging that we study are endothelial dysfunction or vascular endothelial dysfunction, which refers to dysfunction of the single cell layer lining the, inner, the inside of, insides of blood vessels and stiffening of the, the large elastic arteries. And um, research has shown that mitochondria, and in particular, excess production of reactive oxygen species by mitochondria is a mechanism contributing to those um, forms of vascular dysfunction with aging. Understood. And uh, why is uh, oxidative stress so dangerous for mitochondria? Well, in the context of arterial dysfunction, age-related arterial dysfunction, um, oxidative stress produced by the mitochondria is detrimental largely because it reacts with a molecule called nitric oxide. And so nitric oxide is a key vasodilatory and vasoprotective molecule in the vasculature. And declines in nitric oxide um, are associated or cause vascular dysfunction with aging. And so when you have excess production of reactive oxygen species by a variety of sources, one of them being mitochondria, the, those reactive oxygen species react with nitric oxide. Um, there's a subsequent reduction in the bioavailability of nitric oxide. And so there's less nitric oxide to serve a lot of those protective functions. Okay, and uh, obviously mitochondria need antioxidants that uh, can get across the tricky double barrier and actually get inside. Um, maybe could you just describe the, the, the mechanisms of this barrier and also how does the molecule uh, mitoquinol help with this? Yes, so, um, you know, reactive oxygen species perform both, benef they perform a variety of beneficial function, so they are very important for cellular signaling and cellular health in general. And because they, the kind of regulated controlled production of reactive oxygen species is so important, the body and the mitochondria in particular do have a lot of what's, what are called antioxidant enzymes or antioxidant systems to kind of keep reactive oxygen species levels in homeostatic or kind of uh, healthy levels. And what happens with aging is there's an imbalance between the um, endogenous antioxidant capacity and the production of reactive oxygen species by other sources in the body such that the balance shifts in favor of oxidative stress. And that, that's when you kind of encounter some of the, the more detrimental consequences, such as a decline in nitric oxide bioavailability. So because you, with aging, there's this loss of um, ability to com combat or reduce the excess re uh, reactive oxygen species, that's where the um, approach of using 
antioxidants or mitochondrial targeted antioxidants such as MitoQ to help keep those excess reactive oxygen species levels back in check, so back down in the homeostatic range. Okay, that sounds very good. So gents, you've uh, co-authored a paper on the arterial benefits of MitoQ, uh, a supplement that contains mitoquinol, and you made some pretty incredible findings. So maybe could you tell us a little bit about that? So really, you know, this was a pilot trial to determine if a specific uh, mitoquinol, MitoQ, given orally, supplemented as a dietary supplement, would improve arterial health in middle-aged and older adults. And Matt really directed the study. We had performed some previous work in a mouse model of arterial aging. And we were able in those mouse studies to actually reverse the adverse effects of aging on arterial health. So we used really those studies in mice as a platform for this initial pilot trial in human subjects. And as Matt found, the arterial function improved after six weeks on MitoQ, MitoQuinol, and both that improvements in endothelial function that Matt spoke about increased, so, so endothelial function improved. And also we were able to reduce the stiffness of the large arteries that influence blood pressure and a number of other key cardiovascular health parameters. And there was evidence that these changes may have been mediated by a reduction in the reactive oxygen species that have that are produced by mitochondria. So mitochondrial induced oxidative stress was reduced by the, the mitoquinol, the mitoQ supplementation, and that led to improvements in vascular function. Well, I mean, that, those results sound amazing. Um, Matt, in relation to your, your view on the study, what, what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, I, I agree with Doug. I think it, um, it was an important study, you know, one of the, the first early studies in people to show that some of the benefits that we observed in old mice um, with the ability of MitoQ supplementation to improve arterial function actually were, we saw some evidence of the ability to translate those findings to older adults. So the results do provide initial evidence that supplementation with mitochondrial targeted antioxidants such as MitoQ um, may be important strategies to help improve vascular function in older adults. Very interesting. So what about the next steps? Are you planning to take the study out onto a larger scale now? Yeah, so as Doug mentioned, this was a pilot study. So the kind of next step is after uh, efficacy or initial evidence of efficacy is, is observed in a pilot trial, um, we seek to conduct a larger phase two or phase two A clinical trial. Um, so this is a, so we're conducting a larger phase two A randomized placebo controlled parallel group design uh, supplementation trial with MitoQ to extend and confirm the benefits we observed in the pilot trial. We are doing a larger supplementation period. So we're doing about a three month supplementation period versus the, the shorter six week supplementation period in the pilot trial. And the primary goal of the study and the primary outcome in the clinical trial is, is vascular endothelial function. So we hope to confirm that MitoQ or mitochondrial targeted antioxidants can indeed improve vascular health with aging. Well, that's wonderful news. And of course, you know, vascular, vascular health and, and aging is a big concern to, to many of our, uh, our, our viewers. Maybe you, as you're both authorities in this area of the body, what are your top tips for uh, uh, your cardiovascular system and keeping it healthy? Yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's going to sound like more of the same from what you've heard 
from other sources related to, to maintaining health throughout the lifespan. But really, the, the number one recommendation I would have is, is exercise, regular exercise. Again, it, it sort of sounds formulaic, but, but it really is probably, exercise is probably the most, the single most powerful, you know, uh, mechanism or strategy to maintain the health of the entire cardiovascular system as we undergo the aging process. So really any kind of exercise, certainly aerobic exercise uh, plays a, a tremendous role in maintaining cardiovascular health with aging. We've also determined that maintaining a proper dietary pattern, uh, the types of food that you eat, the, the composition of the food that you eat has a major role in keeping your arteries healthy with aging. The amount of food that you take in, the amount of calories that you take in also need to be in an appropriate range. That also promotes arterial health with aging. And one of the interesting new things that I'll, uh, I'll mention before stopping here is that we're studying a new strategy, passive heat therapy, uh, which some have called the new aerobic exercise. And this just uh, involves someone sitting in, in, in our case, a hot tub. It could also be a sauna for three or four times a week. And it produces the kind of physiological responses really that aerobic exercise produces when you perform that. And our early indications from a pilot trial show the same kind of benefits that we see with exercise and some of these other healthy lifestyle behaviors. Well, Doug, that's very interesting. So a lot we can learn from uh, from the Nordic region, of course, on that. And um, we all understand that diet and exercise really underpin many of the uh, attributes to a, a long and healthy life. Uh, but Matt, how about yourself? Any observations from your side? Uh, I mean, I, def I, I strongly agree with what Doug said. I think aerobic exercise really is a, 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 a well-established kind of first-line strategy for healthy vascular aging. And we've even done some preclinical studies in our laboratory to show that one of the mechanisms by which aerobic exercise does improve vascular health with aging is through a reduction in mitochondrial oxidative stress. So um, it is an effective way to, to target that pathway as well. So yeah, I, I, I agree with Doug. Well, great. I mean, we've heard some fascinating uh, information today. And of course, uh, best of luck to you both with the, the next stage of your trials. But the results so far sound wonderful. So thanks very much for joining us today. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.